What is up everyone? My name is Tony Big Blind, and in this video we're going to look at all of the patch notes for the Cards and Tankards 1.2 update. So let's just jump right into it. 21 new cards were added, 5 for each faction and 1 neutral, which we will look at later. They've now added an in-game privacy policy that you will need to agree to before you can start playing Cards and Tankards. They've added an auto-selling cards feature, which is on by default and you can turn up in the settings, where whenever you obtain a card that you already have more than three copies of, or more than one copy of, if it's a legendary card, it will automatically sell the card back for gold. There is a new draft battle progression scroll pop-up at the end of draft battles. There's a new animation for daily win reward cards. And there's new visual effects for animated cards in boosters. Very cool. For things that were changed, they updated the documentation. They updated the buy, sell, and animate prices for individual cards due to introducing legendary rarity. So they made all the prices for things involving legendary rarity things increased. They updated the code of conduct. They removed a summons tokens from text on cards. The hourglass cooldown is now paused during abilities, except when it's waiting for the player to make an input. So this will mean uh, if you have 10 Garanans on the board, it will now no longer, the turn timer will no longer pass during those Garanans activating. But if you are stalling on selecting a creature for a dark matter blast the timer will continue to tick it down and they also changed draft mode just very ever so slightly so now if you are not playing dungeon master your first selection will be a legendary card from that main faction that you did select initially and there was also a whole host of bug fixes that I will just flash on screen so that if you wish you can pause and read through all of them I'm not gonna go over them in detail but they will be on screen if you would like to read over them yourselves. Okay, starting off with Dungeon Master card balance changes, we have Alcar. Its entrance ability stays the same, all of its stats stay the same. The difference now is the last word effect. Instead of playing every banished spell that this card banished, it now casts a random banished spell. This will overall help keep the card uh, less glitchy as a whole. Um, but will also allow, you know, for bigger plays when it comes to, like, the newer cards that banish themselves. You might be able to recast some of those much stronger cards more than once. So that will be a pretty interesting change. Dutiful Servant is now an elemental instead of an underling. Gun Haunt's Call, instead of being spend all your mana to summon a Desperado with attack equal to mana you spent, is now a 1 mana spell. Banish a friendly creature, then deal that creature's attack to an enemy creature. Just because Gun Haunt's Call really wasn't very good, there was really only one edge case for it, which was using it as a 0 mana spell to proc Bone Brute's Amped Effect, but even then was barely played. So they decided to switch it up, and we will get to see how that goes in the future. Mine Corruption got a very small text change, really nothing to note of though. Necromancy is now a rare card. Till on Death do us part got a pretty big change. It is now a 3 mana spell instead of a 4 mana spell, and instead of giving 2 friendly undead creatures 2-2, two, two, it now gives up to 2 friendly creatures 1-1, one, one, and if that creature is undead, 2-2 two, two instead. So basically it just expanded the range to what you could put a buff on, decreased the cost, and actually made the buff worth it overall, because now you're spending 3 mana to give 4-4 four, four worth of buffs in the best case scenario. As a quick note here, something I did not realize before recording this part is that mobilization now will target the highest mana cost first in the selected range that it can mobilize. So anytime I say, well, if you're spending 9 mana, it could mobilize a 1 mana thing, uh, yeah, it won't do that as long as you're playing it correctly, um, so just keep that in mind. Anytime I mention something like that, you can basically discount that and just assume it will target the highest mana cost thing in your preserves every time. That is within its range to target. 
Onto the Monsters Rights cards, we have a really big one here with Acidic Overlord. They changed it from a rare to a legendary, so now you can only put one in each deck. They've dropped its health down from 9 health to 6 health, keeping the attack where it was at 6. Old effect was Entrance, if you control another ooze mobilize 5 or 6. At the end of your turn, summon a slime, give it 1-1 one, one for each friendly ooze, but now, whenever you summon a friendly ooze, give all friendly summoned and reserved oozes except Acidic Overlord 1-1. One, one. Aftermath, summon a slime. So now anytime you play an ooze during your turn, all your oozes both in play and in the reserves will gain 1-1, one, one, and then at the end of every turn, all your oozes will gain 1-1. One, one because Acidic Overlord summons a slime at the end of the turn. They've slightly buffed Bighorn Pack Beast to now make it mobilize X or less when it takes damage rather than it having to be X, so that is very nice. Gelatinous Protestant got a pretty big change. Used to be 1-1 one, one entrance, summon a lonely ooze, last word mobilize one or two. And now it is a 2-2 two, two with Taunt that gives all creatures in your reserves 1-1 one, one on play. And now it's an uncommon card instead of a common card. They swapped Gurm from an Underling to an Elemental. And Lonely Ooze no longer exists. Power Inequality now says uh, if you control 2 or less creatures mobilize 9 or less, otherwise mobilize 6 or less. So this is allowing power and equality to hit some of those lower cost cards on the end. Also power and equality got a name change to Equilibrium. The slime got changed from being the XX card that was just summoned by the Acidic Overlord to now taking the Lonely Ooze spot and having new stats of 1-1. Taunting also got a very good rechange, where instead of giving a friendly creature taunt and then draw a card when not blocked, it effectively now gives a creature taunt and then whenever the taunt is activated, whether by them blocking your taunt creature or by them targeting the taunt creature with a spell, you get to draw a card. Very good indeed. And then Union of Monsters and Zealous Ooze, they're both Lonely Ooze texts were replaced with Slime. All right, now let's take a chunk over to Plundering Guild. First up, we have Assassin Strikes. Got changed from a token type to Bane type, which will be important for later effects. Dagger Supplier got a really nice change where uh, instead of it basically killing itself with its own ability, now whenever you summon a creature, it just places a Call to Arms in your deck. And Call to Arms is a boon that summons an adventurer and then you draw an extra card, and then it gains two health for an additional one coin, so that card will see much more play nowadays. Garnjian Cutthroat got a pretty big buff where it used to just put a single Assassin Strike into your opponent's deck, but now it puts three whenever either of its abilities trigger if you enhance it. Loot the Body got changed to change its enhance a cost from four coins to two coins, which is much better. There was no reason it should have been two coins on a one mana spell that just doubled the effect of the spell. So very cool to see that finally get changed. Passimian Liquidator got a buff from its enhance effect using to add two Assassin Strikes for three coins. It now is reversed with adding three Assassin Strikes for two coins. So very, very nice change on that. For Potion of the Weld, they made it banish itself after you play it, and they also reduced the enhance cost down to two. So making it so you can't make all of your spells free over and over and over again with Potion of the Weld and go seemingly infinite, but they did compensate slightly by reducing the cost of the enhance effect on a Potion of the Weld. So I think this is a very good change overall for everybody in the game pretty much. Except for those people who really wanted to play some very nasty control decks. Spy Master of the Guild got changed from Entrance, randomly place 5 Assassin Strikes into your opponent's deck, Enhance, gain Assassin Strike, deal plus 1 damage for 2 coins, to now say Bane's deal plus 1 damage, which was its old Enhance effect, and now Prepare, randomly place Assassin Strikes into your opponent's deck for each Bane your opponent drew last turn. So for each 
assassin strike they drew into they now get a new assassin strike in their deck if they don't deal with this creature very cool indeed wanted notice got a very big buff instead of losing all of your coins to put an assassin strike for each coin it now is a two is now a one mana spell uh, still a one mana spell that randomly places three assassin strikes into your opponent's deck or you can enhance it to place six instead for two coins so the assassin strike package as a whole is looking very very nice indeed but now let's move on to Augur Order, where Endless Merc Band got its taunt removed. Very sad for Endless Merc Band. Grand Tutoring no longer copies attributes, so you won't get any more flying, you won't get any more taunt, you know, one-man armies, most amps, unless you're copying like Bone Brute, which has amped baked into the text of the card. Life Pact got a very minor change, which now instead of saying when you're outnumbered, it's when you do not outnumber your opponent. So now, you, instead of your opponent needing to have more creatures than you, you can also have an equal number of creatures for Life Pact to still get its effect. Merchant's Guard got a slight change. Its main effect is the exact same, but its discard effect is now instead of give a random friendly creature one health until the beginning of your next turn, is now discarded, gain one attack. Parchment Barrage got a slight change as well, so that now you cast more spells than your opponent did last turn is changed to your opponent did not cast more spells than you last turn. So the onus is still on your opponent to cast more spells than you, but now again similar to the life pack change, if you played an equal number of spells, then your Parchment Barrage will still stay up for the next turn. Pre-planned prophecy got a small change. It used to say draw two cards, discard two cards to the top of your deck. Now it just says draw two innate cards, then discard two cards from the top of your deck. Just the addition of innate there pretty much. So you can't draw into boons. We got a change to reiteration, which basically just now cannot hit a legendary card. So no more infinite spellbook forgeries for all you degenerates. <laughs> Slick Grifter got a very cool change to instead of giving enemy creatures plus three plus zero until the end Until the beginning of their next turn and then discarded give enemy creatures minus one attack this turn now says it give for all friendly loophole creatures restless until the end of this turn and then give a random friendly non loophole creature loophole with its discarded effect so this should definitely see an increase in play overall. You know, it's much less gimmicky now. Uh, it, it's basically just a free attack with all of your loophole creatures because you'll still be able to block with them on your next phase. And especially with things like Kira, you know, the probably largest zero attack creature in the game because I missed so many other zero attack creatures in my other video. Uh, this will be a great addition to a lot of decks. Alrighty, so next up is Suppressor of Magic. It used to be a 610 with entrance last words, press a creature, and discarded, give friendly elementals 1-1. One, one. But now it's a 7 attack, 7 health creature, which says activate, suppress an enemy creature, discarded, a random 9 mana or less spell in all players' hands, cost 1 more mana. It, it's suppress effect changing from an entrance and last word to an activate. So technically you could get less value out of this card as a whole if your opponent ended up removing it from the board. Uh, but I guess the hope is that it will survive for more than two turns and you'll be able to use its activate effect multiple times. And then going on to neutrals, there were two cards that got changed. Garanan got changed from a two attack two health creature to a zero attack four health creature with pacifist. You're not going to be attacking with Garanan anyways, so the pacifist doesn't really matter. And the two extra health instead of the attack is a very nice buff indeed. Just Maybe, hopefully, uh, it'll stay on the board long enough to at least get you one card. And then some random card renames. We already talked about the power and equality to Equilibrium. Gar Great Arbiter of Garsong is now Arbiter of Garsong. Hyped Bug Shrine is now Rebellion Spark with some new art, might I add. And Restless Spirit is now Disturbed Spirit. But now, let's look at everyone's favorite part of this new update, all of the brand new cards. 
Starting off with Dungeon Master, we have Larenteer's Armaments, a 3 mana common spell. Give a friendly creature taunt, and when this attacks, deal 2 direct damage to your opponent. This card seems very cool. Now, for my opinions on a lot of these cards, they're going to be very basic. I might not even have some, just because, you know, they're super new. I only just got the cards yesterday, um, or last night, I guess. So I don't have many opinions on most of these cards, but I'm really excited to try to play around with them. And in the future, I'll have some more videos talking about all the new cards and all the new decks you can play with them. So stay tuned for those, but for now, let's just talk about them. So another way to give a friendly creature taunt, always very cool, and this incentivizes the attacking variant of taunt to let you deal two direct damage with it. So basically it's increasing its damage by two and forcing both of that damage to go directly to the enemy's face, which is very nice. Next we have Soul Extraction, four mana uncommon, deal two damage to an enemy creature and all other creatures with the same name. If any die, draw a card. So if your opponent's got a lot of copies of maybe Cautious Hunting Party, this card would be very good. You know, if they've got a lot of maybe Bone Amalgamates, this could be good. Ooh, you could target like all of their slimes. That could be really good. Just anything that your opponent is going to have a lot of on the board that maybe don't have a bunch of HP, Soul Extraction is going to do a lot of work, and especially drawing an extra card after it's done. I think that also might get buffed by Mastery, although I'm not 100% sure. I haven't looked into that interaction. But I think since it has a number on the card, deal 2 damage to an enemy creature, it should get buffed by Mastery as well, so very nice. Next at Eternal Aetherite, a 5 mana 2-2, two, two, rare elemental creature. After this card enters the banish zone, give it 2-2, two, two, and it is placed on the top of the owner's deck. So there's a bunch of new ways to banish cards in this update, you know, a couple rebalanced ones, some older ones, some newer ones. Uh, so Eternal Aetherite will, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna want to throw him in the banish zone at least twice before he becomes a 6-6 six, six, and then you're gonna want to start playing him. And he seems pretty not too shabby, uh, I'm really excited to see what how people are going to work this into a deck, or at least what decks they're going to work into. Uh, maybe they'll work this into a Bone Amalgamate deck. I'm not all too sure, but I'm excited to mess around with it myself. Next, we have one of the cards we looked at the other day. Animated Weaponry, 6 mana, 4-4, four, four, Uncommon Creature. Adjacent Creatures have 1-1 one, one Entrance Give. Adjacent Creatures Taunt. Like I said the other day, I think this will be a fine addition to a lot of Dungeon Master decks especially because it's one of the only ways in Dungeon Master to give taunt, now that we know that there is at least one other way with Larenteer's Armaments, but Animated Weaponry still seems like a very interesting card indeed. And finally we have Mind Squander, 7 mana epic spell, banish your hand, draw 5 cards, gain 5 life. So Mind Squander, you know, can be pretty good if you have things such as Eternal Aetherite, it's basically just giving all your Eternal Rite a 2-2 buff. You also get to gain 5 life, so this is more or less a reset your hand for the turn sort of cards. Let's jump over to the Monsters Rights Association where we have Unshackle, 0 mana uncommon spell, spend all your remaining mana, mobilize X or less, where X is 1 less than the total mana spent. More ways of mobilizing things, always good. So I'm excited to see people play Unshackle in some mobilization based decks, probably some Ooze decks is where I'll get see a lot of play, since Oozes are a lot about buffing the things in your reserves. And then next we have Leyline Aligner, 4 mana, 4-4 four, four, common elemental creature. When mobilized, gain 1 mana this turn. If you have an elemental in your hand, gain 2 mana instead. So um, you already gain 1 mana when you mobilize something. So on base, this will give you two mana whenever you mobilize it. And if you have an elemental, it will give you three more mana that turn. That is absolutely bonkers. We're talking about getting like a stellar shard out turn one. Six, six down on turn one, you know, that's brutal. If you can mana curve by three mana in like an ooze deck and pretty much anything, you know, that's gonna be absolutely disgusting. 
So I'm sure this card will see a lot of play. Really excited. Next we have Gelatinize, 5 mana common spell, mobilize 5 or less, the mobilized creature becomes an ooze. So this should be pretty interesting, you know, again, this might help you get out like Leyline Aligner, and it also will turn it into an ooze to proc things like Acidic Overlord. Next we have new another new ooze, Carrion Decomposer, 6 mana, 1-1, one, one. epic ooze, summoning 2 slimes in a single turn, mobilizes this card. Entrance, add a copy of this card to your reserves and give that copy 1-1. One, one. So anytime you summon two of the new slime card in a single turn, it will mobilize all your carrier decomposers, and then they will all put themselves back into the reserves as a copy with increased stats. So, you know, just an extra way to sort of keep your oozes coming out with things like, you know, zealous ooze, like Acidic Overlord, with things such as Union of Monsters, for example. Yeah, On to the Plunder Guild cards. First we have Meager Misdeed, 2 mana, common spell. Your opponent discards the top X innate cards from their deck, where X is this card's mana cost. Enhance costs 2 more for 2 coins. So this is our first uh, example of Mill that we've seen, uh, basically just being able to on base, it will discard two cards, although if you're getting near the end game and you think your opponent has a ton of assassin strikes in their deck, you might as well just enhance it for two more coins to play it for four mana and discard four cards instead. Next, again, we have another card that we looked at the other day, so we'll briefly glance over it. Shady Investment, two mana, epic spell, gain a coin, randomly place two stolen treasure into your deck, enhance four stolen treasures instead for one coin. We'll look at Stolen Treasure in a sec, but you would pretty much always enhance this card, and I think it's going to be a very good addition in most Plunder Guild decks, just for extra added coin generation. Now, Stolen Treasure, it's a boon that gains you two coins, and then you draw an additional card whenever you draw into it. Next, we have Cunning Snare Master, three mana, one attack, four health, common ranged creature. Activate all banes, move up one position in your deck. Enhance two positions instead for one coin. So this will just bring all of their Assassin Strikes closer and closer to the top in order to be activated. You might even want to combo this with something such as the MRAs give a creature amped just so you can use this activate ability on the first turn it comes into play. Could be very nice. Next we have Devilish Larceny, 3 mana uncommon spell steal a random innate card from your opponent's primary faction zone. Enhance this card co er, costs one less mana for one coin. So, stealing a random innate card from your opponent's primary faction zone. What is a primary faction zone? It is a new mechanic introduced to the game, where whatever your primary faction is determines your primary faction zone. If it is Dungeon Master, it will be the Graveyard. Monsters Rights Association will be the Reserves. Plunder Guild will be the Hand. And then our order will be the deck. So obviously the two big ones here being Monsters Rights Association stealing from your reserves and Plunder Guild getting stolen from your hand. Both of these effects on those two factions are going to be way better than if you're playing against a Dungeon Master deck or an Augur Order deck. So this will be a very, very tricky card indeed. Like if you imagine you're playing Oozes and then your opponent just steals one of your Carrion Decomposers, Tough luck, I guess. And next we have our first new legendary card, Jorgen the Stout. Five mana, three attack, three health, legendary noble creature. While in your hand at the beginning of your turn, gain one, one. Enhance, gain restless and multi-blocker for three coins. So this is a card you're gonna want to, hopefully that you get in your starting hand or super early, and then it'll just build stats and build stats and build stats. And then you can enhance it and pretty much just attack with it every turn and have a nice big chunky blocker as well to go along with it for only five mana. So I'm sure this will see play. How much play, I'm not too sure, because if you see this card any later than maybe, you know, turn five, uh, you're probably not gonna get a ton ton of value out of it. Although maybe turn five is actually still fine to get it. Alrighty, now moving on to Augur Order cards, we have Channel Destruction, 2 mana epic contract condition. You gained life 5 times since cast, have your opponent's life, then discard this card. 
So if you have five instances of healing life, that is not healing five life, but healing life five times, then you get to have your opponent's HP. So this is a good way in a health deck to get your opponent, you know, from their 30 health to 15, and then from 15 down to, I believe it would be eight. And then hopefully try to finish them off with other means after that. So very interesting card for health decks. Interested to see how health decks do after this update, especially with some of the other cards that are coming that we'll talk about in a sec. Next we have Null Mage Resident, two mana, two attack, two health common creature. All creatures in all players' hands cost one more mana. Discarded a random nine mana or less creature in all players' hands costs one more mana. So this is going to be really good in your very heavy auger spell decks because your creatures will cost less mana and your opponent, or I'm sorry, you will have less creatures than your opponent as a whole. So your opponent's creatures will cost more mana, which makes them harder to play. So while you get to play your cheaper spells, they have to play more expensive creatures. Next we have Golden Silence, a 3 mana common spell. Suppress a creature. If it was friendly, draw a card. Otherwise, gain 2 life. And discarded, shuffle your deck. So, you know, being able to 3 mana suppress an enemy creature is just going to be mwah, chef's kiss. Absolute delight. I am going to love this card. And especially also because you can suppress your own creature. You can suppress something like Dark Omen Spyhawk to remove its pacifist from it from itself and draw you an additional card. So this card is definitely going to see a ton of play in this new update. Super excited for this one. Next we have Restorative Alchemy, a five mana uncommon spell where you gain five life and randomly place five life elixirs into your deck. Discarded randomly place one life elixir into your deck. Life elixir, what does it do? It's a boon that gains you two health and then draws you an additional card, just like all other boons. Draw a card. So I think this card's gonna be pretty neat. You know, 5 mana, gain 5 life now, gain 10 life later. So it should be a pretty interesting card overall. And lastly, the final card we looked at the other day is Kira. 9 mana, 0 attack, 10 health, legendary creature. When you take direct damage, give all friendly creatures 0, 1. So give them an additional 1 health, and then discard it to give a random friendly creature 2 health. So Kira Kirwin of Garsong, definitely going to be a very nice play in defensive Ecumen's deck, so I'm super excited to add that in and see how it goes. And then finally, we have the neutral card that was added, which is Skill Siphoner. 5 mana, 3 attack, 3 health, rare creature. Entrance, remove all attributes from an enemy creature, then gain those attributes. So you can steal the flights, you can steal the taunts, you can steal the multi-blocker, you can steal the restless, you can steal, you know, any of those fun attributes that are all bunched onto one creature, you can steal them. So this card is going to see a very, very good amount of play. Also, I might have said 3 health here, but that is what is typed out. I kind of thought it was 5 health, but just refer to the card image that's on screen. It's not important. But in a nutshell, those were all of the cards. I hope you are as excited for these changes as I am, and I hope to see all of you in the taverns. If you enjoy my style of content, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe. I will have more videos on all of the new stuff coming in the future. You know, me opening packs to see how much gold it takes for me to get the cars, which you can see sort of in the background here. But also me playing games with new decks, trying out new things, and hopefully maybe even playing in the next monthly standard tournament, which will be next Saturday. So I am super excited for all of that. To come and if you are make sure to subscribe and leave a like on this video to show your support for the channel as well as keeping up to date with my content but otherwise i hope you have a fabulous day have a great one